So guns and epoxy, those are two things we love in this shop. And if you didn't see last summer, we did a pretty killer project with Black Rifle Coffee where we used both. So I got married as well last year, and with that, any red-blooded American gets himself a gift before they got married, and I procured this. Since the day I bought it, I've wanted to do a display case kind of thing for it. So we're gonna take this cutoff from my first river table, yeah, and shit's gonna get weird. So because we're gonna use the drop from the river table, I know we have some crazy character like in this section. So I'm gonna cut this chunk out. And I think the only way to do so is with the Sasquatch. So here's my idea, peoples. The box, you can see this is some ridiculously gorgeous figured wood. So here is gonna be wood, and then this is gonna be epoxy with clear, and it'll just be see-through. So you'll see the dovetail, and they'll look like they're floating. The box is gonna be 13 inches long, wide by 10 inches deep. And with a three-quarter inch width-ish, that should give us plenty of clearance on the inside. And you should be able to see from the outside too the gun as it's chilling in there. And that's gonna look gorgeous. We need to cut these down to dimensions. My thought is two inches clear of resin, which is mean I'm gonna need these at nine inches and six inches. Math. You smart. Let's cut these up and cut some dumplings. This wood has so much figure. I don't even know what to do with it. Love that. I think this is uh, looking good. Dude, I don't know. We're really gonna use Clara Walnut and do clear epoxy. Yes, shut up. I'm telling you, it'll look good. Dude, I don't know. It'll look good. I stole this idea. No, I didn't steal this idea. I'm elaborating on an idea from my buddy, Jonathan Katz Moses. He did this miter to dovetailed corner joint on his own. It's beautiful. It's cool, check it out. So I'm gonna use his jig to cut these, because freedom. So all we're cutting is tails, so that's kind of all I need to mark. What's funny is, I'm waiting on my damn dovetail table saw blade. That would've made these so fast. So we're gonna wanna go three, which means we've gotta find the center. If we go half inch in, or quarter inch, which means one inch and one sixteenth. Perfect. Dovetail jig, saw. We're gonna buddy these up since we're cutting only tails. Now because I'm a lurch, I can come around this side and cut over my bench. All right, waste removal time. This is the worst part about dovetails, but fortunately I don't have to be crazy accurate because we're filling these with resin and there's not actually a real joint that has to go with it, which is nice. Still clean them up to look pretty because looks are all that matters. We are purely about vanity on this channel, as you can tell. Get off. Lid, we need a lid. For the lid, we're gonna do a river because rivers. So I've got this chunk of walnut. We're gonna rip it in half, clean up the edges, and then pour a tiny little clear river in. Let's do it. That's gonna be our river. We're gonna put a, we're gonna hop in a tiny boat, paddle down it. ASMR. So, in order to keep these from floating before the pour, 
Sam's got this beautiful box he built. I'm just gonna go ahead and clamp these in here. It's time to pour. No resins come pouring out yet. <laughs> it's always a bonus. Oh, that, pop, that came off pretty nice. Oh yeah. Ooh hoo, sun. That's looking. Nice. That's kind of sexy. In like a very weird way. Now for the main event. So weirdly, when we poured these, I didn't pour them over the wood. But then we came in the next day and everything was over the wood. So probably gonna lose all of these clamping pads. Oh, oh, <laughs> hey! There's one. God, that's amazing. I am so glad that those didn't stick. We were literally like, well, we're screwed, we're losing them. God. Sam, what kind of devilish mold did you build here? It's like I made a one by out of dovetailed, highly figured <laughs> walnut and resin. Oh God. Oh, yes, it is kind of working. Dude, this walnut is on another level. She's gonna work, Clark. All right, let's uh, Let's do a little happy dance. Over to the planer. Clean these things up. So I've got a helical head planer. It should be okay to take super light passes. We're gonna do the top first, and I think the only option is to get as close to nude as possible, and just because I'm nervous. Oh, are you admiring my new yin shirt? <laughs> you sure as hell are. Available in the description. Let's play. I'm taking like a 30 second at a pass. Cause I don't, we don't want to tear out. So it's gonna tear out. See? Which means, damn it! That, that is literally what you call a fail. That failed. All right, we're gonna have to just pass this through the drum sander like a thousand times. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. All right, this should go slightly better, just might take a little longer. Autobots assemble! Looking good. That actually went pretty well. Let's actually just make sure, is it flat? Pucker your butthole. <laughs> Pretty flat. That's a big concern. If you're drum sanding something, it's not a planer. It's not gonna make it perfectly parallel. The, the head on the drum floats. So things don't always come out consistently the same thickness. We got lucky here because the pour, the bottom reference was actually super flat. So nice, I'll hand sand this after I trim it up to size. But now that we have to do, <clears throat> now that we're gonna be running these through the sander, I think I'd prefer to cut these to smaller pieces first. Let's somehow make marks in clear resin and cut this. little mineral spirit wipe down, kind of get a feel for this thing. We're sanded to 220. So what I'll do is I'll sand to 320. And then <clears throat> once the box is put together, I'll get final sizing on the lid and then cut it down to size. We're close. We are close. All right, <clears throat> we are sanded to 320 grit. That's a lot of grits. Now we're gonna establish our miters. I think I'm gonna pre-finish. Should I pre-finish? 
I'm going to pre-finish the inside so I can polish the inside before it gets put together. So I got a little bit of work to do. I'm going to cut the miters and I got to cut a slot and wrap it in a bottom, which we have to glue up. Thank goodness for Type Bond Quick and Thick. We're going to try and patch some of these little bubbles. Got resin shavings on your face. That kind of helped with some of those bubbles. I think inherently I just may have used the wrong type of epoxy. So we're gonna finish the insides before I put this together. That way I can buff them while they're flat. So we're gonna hit them real quick with a coat of lacquer. Wow. God damn, Sam, this just might work. Now the bottom. Is this the best epoxy? We don't know. So epoxy's epoxy. We're literally only gonna have like the tiniest, thinnest line of epoxy we can possibly get. Now that we have the box dimensions, I can make the lid fit perfectly. We're gonna sand the edges on this beautiful edge sander from Jet. Sponsor today's build. You guys wanna see all my Jet tools? I got a link down below. Check them out. They're the best. I love them. I literally don't know how I feel about this. Spiraling down the wrong, the wrong hole <laughs> quickly. <laughs> I think one thing that's making me really not like the way it's looking is because it just is hazy as hell. Experiment with the most expensive things that I own. So I don't like the lid. This just is not gonna do it. I don't know why, but we don't love it. So we're gonna make a just standard kind of square bridle jointed something lid. Um, and I'm gonna see, I've got a book matched piece of that figured walnut that I had from a chunk I found. Try that, or we're gonna get into glass cutting without glass cutting tools. So we're not getting as much see-through-ness as we want. I mean, it looks cool, but we're not going for just cool. So to try to buff this up a little bit, I'm gonna do what I did on the black rifle table, which was just sand this up. That table I went up to a thousand grit wet sand. I don't, I don't even, I don't know where the hell I put that. So we got 400 on here. We're gonna hit it with 400, and then we're gonna use an automotive buffing compound. To try to clear these up a little bit. So we've got a, a medium cut buffing compound and essentially you just rub it in and then wipe it off. So it's got like super, it's got grit in it. I don't know what the hell the grit is, but this is how auto detailers get scratches out of cars. And we're just abrading the finish here. This is not going into the wood or the actual resin. This is just into the lacquer that we built on top. So it definitely gives it a little bit of a glassier look. And that, my friends, is my trick to clear resin. Is it right? I don't freaking know. But you can see, I gotta get the inside here. This is much more clear than this. We also have death over here. Let's go there, or even there. But yeah, that's much more the look we're going for. So the lid's mocked up, looks pretty decent. Now we need to decide if that will look better with this crazy book match piece that is just slightly too small. Damn it! What am I gonna do? Guess we can't use that. I could go this way. Do we wanna go that way and then it's an all wood box or a piece of glass? Which one would you choose? Leave a comment. So we wanna prop the gun up in the box. And I, if you guys remember, I poured this leftover. It came out so much more clear. So to the point of using this resin, it's supposed to be poured over one inch. And when you don't, that's why we got all the issues. So I want the gun to float in the box like this. So what I think we're gonna do is take this block and just cut it into three, 
three different like blocks that I can set into the box. All right, we pre-finished these because instead of traditional way of putting glass in, we're gonna put it in like a panel would be in a door with, with uh, what are we calling those? Balls, with uh, space balls. What happens when the glass breaks? When the glass breaks, you make a new effing lid. We just need to pray that <clears throat> the vibration from putting the router on it to put the hinges on doesn't break the, the glass. <laughs> Sam's always like, hmm, you thought of something wild. Yeah, because I'm an idiot and I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> and when you're an idiot and you make a lot of mistakes, you try to mitigate those by not being an, nope. Do you try to not be an idiot? Are you okay right now? No, I'm not okay. I'm having a stroke. The glass is in, the lid is glued. Now we just gotta clean up these joints, mount the hinges, and uh, I gotta make a little pull and, and, and it's almost, it's done. We've got the gun floating. What do you guys think about that float, huh? Huh? You didn't see the float? Got some, some floaty blocks. That's what these are. They're fake ice cubes. Maybe they're real. Hinge mortise. Blue tape. Hinge. Tiny dot CA glue. Bloop. Taking the hinge. Tip! Take your screw, put it in wax, then jam it in the cram hole, and it goes in nice and smooth. That's gonna be a wrap on this one. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you wanna see more of my gun projects or any of my epoxy builds, I got playlists for both right here. I'll see you over there. <laughs>